This is a real treat. We're hanging out in uh, Leo Fender's lab. And it's a real honor to be able to just be in here and kind of soak up the vibe and the feel in here. And uh, it's really nice of Paul to let us in here and to, oh. to hang out together in here for a few minutes. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. This is a great room to be in to kind of get your head around Leo Fender just as, as an inventor, as a person driven by this need to create something and uh you know you, you look at the tools that he used uh he wasn't into trying to impress anybody with really you know look at the exotic things that i'm doing or just to try to impress anybody he was a very practical man he was like yeah. i'm trying to accomplish something what is the most elegant simple way to do this uh I mean, this is his test jig for seeing what pickups he was going to use on a five-string bass. He's got one for a four-string and one for a six-string. Yeah. And you look around in his office and say, well, he's, or, well, I wonder what this pickup will sound like. Well, let's put it in here. Let's try it up here. Plug it into an amp. And, well, I wonder what it sounds like here. Oh, I'm not particularly crazy about that design, but I do have another design. I wonder what this one would sound like over here or over here or over here and it's just it's just such a a great way of doing that and, and so you just make up these little modules with these different pickups i'm going to try one with an allen gold magnet i want to try one with the ceramic you go all right we'll just make up a little thing and put it in here and decide where does it sound best or to you where do you like it and uh you know, he was a big fan of bringing other people in it because you know it wasn't like Leo was a killer bass player or guitar player. He was a <laughs> he was he was just a, a genius inventor. Right. But he relied heavily on the opinions of other people. Yeah, I think that a lot of people speak to that. That is a a big reason as to why he was as successful as he was is because he really took to heart and mind the feedback that he got from the most respected players. You know, he put out a a new instrument and then. You know, listen to what the pro guys that were using it out there uh, had to say about it, and that would lead to different refinements, which would ultimately always lead to a better product and a better instrument that, that people oh, would just yeah. grow, grow to enjoy more and more. That's where his head was at, because he wasn't trying to make the best instrument for him. He was trying to yeah. make the best instrument yeah, he, for the people he, he wanted to sell exactly, it exactly because he's not yeah. out, he was not out gigging every night of the week you know but yeah. but the people but who the people who were you know he was listening to what they had to say this is a great example of that man the collection of uh, things that he tried is really kind of staggering this whole cabinet here behind us here is just filled with drawings of things that he thought about wanted to try uh, say over in one of the racks there was a, a headstock design that I came across, pulled it out, said, you know, this is really cool, it's three on a side. And I, I didn't know Leo had ever even thought of doing something like this. Right. It was like, this is really great. That design is what's on our tribute Ascari and Fiorano. It was taken from the lab here. Yeah, so even even after his passing, his, his ideas are yeah. still, every once in a while, maybe just contributions poke, poke like your that. head in here and, <laughs> and grab a new idea and yeah, run with it. Yeah, you come in for inspiration <laughs> like that. Uh, it, it really is a, a, a wonderful place to kind of hang. And, uh, you know, when we when we took G&L over, I, re I remember sitting in my office just thinking, you know, I want to honor this guy here. And I worked at Fender back in the late 70s and always been a strap man myself. And uh -huh. so sure. he, uh, I thought, you know, what better way to honor the man than to make uh, a version of the strat you know call it the legacy yep. you know for him and to make that famous guitar for him and then so i'd spent so many years at fender uh doing the pickups uh, there and, and working in the pickup department i knew what what they were back in the late 50s early 60s and so i thought well, that's that's kind of what we want to do mm -hmm. add the gnl twist of having that passive uh, treble and bass kind of configuration so it's not just a strat mm -hmm. it's what i feel leo would have appreciated you know it's like a tip of the hat to the master using the flavor of GNL and so it was a labor of love yeah 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 well, you it can, was really fun you can really you can tell that yeah that's wonderful great. <laughs> and what a what a uh, position to be in I'm the guy that gets to design a guitar 
to say thank you to Leo Fender after he's passed away. It's a, it's a pretty remarkable story, I think. Yeah, it, it, was, it was an honor, and I say it was a team effort, too. There's great people in this factory. Yeah. It was a, the teamwork is uh, it's very unusual, actually. You know, I, I've worked in many factories, but the crew here, I mean, you can tell everybody still respects and honors that, that Leo heritage. Which is why they keep the, you know, his office in this lab. It's like, yeah. these are these are sacred grounds for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, and as it should be. Yeah. When we were when we were coming in here, Paul's unlocking the door and he says, "There are only two people that have keys to this room, and I'm not one of them." <laughs> so if there's if there's one thing that you know, I think we're really trying to get across um, in our visit here today uh, with GNL and with Paul is that obviously this is a company that has its roots steeped in years and years and years of Leo Fender's prolific achievements with the electric guitar. But it is not a company that lives in the past either. It's definitely a company that maintains a very high uh, level of quality and dedication to all of the instruments that it's putting out. And you can see that when you go through the factory here. You can feel that and every workstation that you visit you can really tell there is a lot of um, dedication and intention behind every step of the process. Um, and we were immediately struck with that as soon as we got here. I just <laughs> want to say, Paul, thanks very much for having us in here. We really appreciate oh, walking my, us my through My pleasure. I, I enjoyed it. Well, uh, we're going to sign off, so thanks for watching. I'm Bob from Music Store Live. This is Paul Gagan, and we will see you next time.